Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Sunny says we're ready, so we are ready. White House, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is White House. How do you hear me? White House Station, welcome aboard the International Space Station. We have you loud and clear. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kota Mizutani, and I serve as a senior advisor for the White House Office of Public Engagement. It is my pleasure to welcome and thank everyone who's tuning in for this special event from the White House with NASA astronauts Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore on the International Space Station. Thank you for the warm welcome. We have an amazing conversation lined up today, and I want to thank our astronauts for their bravery, their wisdom, and for their time. Without further ado, I will turn it over to the moderator for today's conversation, the Distinguished Executive Secretary of our National Space Council, Shrag Parikh. Well, thank you so much, Butch, Sonny. Greetings from planet Earth. Greetings from the White House. I've spent a lifetime talking to people about space. It's such an honor and privilege to be talking to people in space right now. Uh, President Biden, Vice President Harris, and the entire team here at the White House are so thrilled, so proud of the accomplishments that you guys are achieving. We're going to remember your mission for a very, very long time. And your mission is helping us continue to transform America's leadership in space and our nation's access to space. Your work to help design and build Starliner, your bravery in taking this inaugural test flight, something only 10 Americans before you have ever done, demonstrates the ingenuity and bravery that deepens American leadership in space. And we can't thank you enough for what you're doing. And I can't think of anyone better to demonstrate this leadership than the two of you. And also, Sonny, uh, as a girl dad uh, of a three-year-old toddler who thinks she's a teenager right now, uh, it's awesome to know that uh, she has uh, uh, going to grow up in a world that uh, has someone like you as a role model uh, along the way. So thank you so much for what you're doing. And I know that there's a lot of other parents and kids all around the world uh, that are feeling the same way that I do right now. And I'm excited to hear more about how the mission's going. Um, and we have some questions from people all across this country who want to talk to you and, and know what's, how's it going. But before I do, maybe let me turn it over to the two of you for some opening remarks. Well, I can tell you, uh, it is an honor to share this time with y'all as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, uh, it, it has been an interesting several days. It's been a wonderful several days. Um, and I, Sonny and I also, and I'll use that word again, feel honored to have the opportunity to share in this together, share in this with all of those that at Boeing and at ULA and at NASA that have put their all into this. Uh, time and again, uh, we've met different challenges, challenges and have met those challenges with a path to success. And here we, well, we, here we float uh, at the International Space Station together having uh, accomplished a large part of the mission, a very important part of the mission, the launch, the, the rendezvous, all the test points that we did coming up here. And to share some time with you is, like I said, special as well. And I can tell you, I must have some pretty good communication gear there at the White House, because that's the clearest sound I think we've heard since we've been here. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to echo Butch's words. It's just an honor to be here. It's an honor to talk to you yourselves on the Space Council. It's an honor to talk to everybody who's out there interested in, in looking and watching. You know, we have huge shoulders that we stand on. You know, the people that came before us, you know, just paved the way. Um, we've done it. We've worked really hard with our NASA and Boeing counterparts, ULA, to get on an Atlas V and launch us up here. Um, it was an amazing ride. We can talk about that forever if you want to talk about that. Technical stuff is pretty awesome and cool. Um, but just in general, um, you know, going to, putting humans in space, uh, you know, I said it right before I left, is a miracle. You know, pe humans orbiting the planet is just a miracle. And it, it takes, you know, uh, millions of pieces and parts to get together to make that happen. And uh, it's pretty amazing. And um, we're just honored and lucky to be here. 
as part of the you know little piece of the, the cog in the wheel that um, has has made this possible for us to be part of this team. Oh, wonderful! And hey, thank you so much for those remarks. Um, uh, absolutely, uh, without our industry partners, without our colleagues here on the ground across the country at NASA, and even our international partners, uh, none of this could be possible. Uh, to be able to see these achievements. So thank you so much for those great shout outs there. So let's start with a few Q&A uh, questions along the way here. Uh, first one is, why is it important for America to have two unique crewed systems for the International Space Station and for low Earth orbit? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, for you know, we've serially had spacecraft coming to space, and to, obviously to build the International Space Station. And now we're we have two different spacecraft who are able to come to low Earth orbit to the International Space Station and take people up here, or take people just to low Earth orbit to uh, for whatever commercial purposes. And you know that capability, um, as we opened up the commercial crew program, you know we we gave sort of vague requirements to allow American ingenuity to solve the problem. And, you know, we've been lucky enough, you know, up here on the space station right now is a Dragon, is Starliner, and is a Soyuz spacecraft, three spacecraft that take humans to space. And when you see and go in each of them and talk to each other about how these spacecraft operate and work, they're all different. And ch checking out that ingenuity and fostering that excitement for space in a way that would get college kids you know, high school kids and even elementary kids pretty psyched about space all over the world. I, I think this is the, the role of the leader of spacefaring nations to get more and more people interested, involved. And from there, you know, one question after another gets asked and answered and it just perpetuates itself. All right. Great answer. Uh, another one for you here, Sonny. Uh, first audience question here, and this is coming from Matthew from San Francisco, California. He asks, how does it feel being the first woman and the first Asian American astronaut to fly on a test flight? Uh, what would you say to younger Asian Americans and also uh, younger at heart uh, who look up to you? You know, it's a loaded question because um, you know, there's just qualifications for the job, right? And it doesn't really matter who you are. I think that's the biggest thing I, when I'm talking to kids, it doesn't matter who you are, where you came from, you know, what your ethnicity is, what your religion is. You know, if you can do the job, you can do the job. And I challenge people to just get out there and do it. And don't let anybody else tell you no. You know, if you can do it, why not do it? And, you know, Butch reminds me every now and then when we get these types of questions, um, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of funny because I don't think I'd be here unless he thought I was good enough to be here and our whole team thought I was good enough to be here. So, you know, I just want to do the job. And I think anybody who is really committed and ready to go can can do the same thing. I'll add that it is a, it is a unique position she's in. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I'm honored to also share this with her. But I can tell you, when we sit in that capsule side by side, uh, where we come from, what we look like, uh, how long our hair is, how short our hair is, none of that matters. All that matters is knowing your spacecraft absolutely in an integrated fashion as best as you possibly can so you can deal with any and all contingencies. Uh, you know, we, uh, the, the, the ground, Mission Control, operates this spacecraft. We support them in operating it. But when it comes to flying it, they support us in flying it. And uh, the, the person sitting in the right seat, person sitting in the left seat uh, has to be capable. And that's what I, I, I don't, I, I understand and I get it. And, it's a, and, it, and it is a unique position. I'm, I'm grateful to share it with her, like I said. But uh, capability, and she's the person to be in that seat. And I'm honored, like I said, to be there with her. I, I will say, add one, one more comment to it, though. You know, I think um, we are very blessed and lucky to live in the United States of America. We have these opportunities that can be given to anybody. Uh, I don't. I know that's not the same all over the world. I wish it was, um, because it really doesn't. Again, matter where you come from, what you look like, what your ethnicity is, what your religion is. In our country, these opportunities are out there, and you can take them if you want them. Uh, those are both. Yeah, excellent. like like she said. Both. Excellent. 
That's okay. Go ahead. Oh, no, please keep going. Uh, keep, uh, this is a great conversation. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, uh, it's in our national anthem. We are one nation under God, indivisible. That's, yep. that's what we are. And you put that combination of those three together, and you do some pretty amazing things. Um, and that's, that's what this nation uh, was built on, and that's what this space program, our human space program, uh, can, space flight program continues to, to you know, forge forward. And it, and it does just that, working together for the common good of all. Excellent points from the both of you, and absolutely, it is both a honor and a privilege uh, to work space matters, whether you are uh, hundreds of miles above the Earth or sitting at the White House. Uh, it is an absolute privilege uh, to be able to have these opportunities in this great land. Uh, Butch, uh, question for you from Hudson from Lafayette, Louisiana. He asks, what do you enjoy most about your time being in space, and at what age were you inspired to become an astronaut? I, I can't remember the age. It's always been there from day one. I mean, watching my little black and white, white, black and white television during the Apollo era, and it's always been a fire and a desire for, for me. And uh, what inspired? What 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 is it that you know? It's it's the job. It's it's taking a problem and and being a part of the big team that solves it. And uh, space flight is, is wrought with, uh, and I won't call them problems, but they're just issues you have to deal with. I mean, something, anything that's hard uh, to do is worth doing, and anything that's worth doing is probably going to be hard to do. So, and, and that's space flight. That's human space flight. There's a lot of issues that in human space flight that we deal with that other space flight and satellites and such don't have to deal with. And, and that's, that's because we are a pretty fairly important commodity as humans. And, uh, um, and, and preserving that, preserving life, and preserving the capability and redundant systems upon redundant systems to make sure that that's the case is what we work with. And failure modes, if that fails, what happens then? And, if, and, and then we theorize, well, since we had that failure, now what if we have these, these, this, this, and this failure? How are we going to handle those? And coming up with a plan to do that, uh, that's what we're all about, and that's important. And that's, that's really what drives me and it's the challenges that day in and day out there's not a day that goes by that there's not a new challenge and uh, that is thrilling and exciting and it's working together I don't know that I'll remember so much as much what I we've done and accomplished as really who we've done it with and shared it with I think that's the memory that I'll be holding wonderful um, thank you so much um, uh, we have a couple of questions left here with the short time windows that we have with uh, thank you to uh, Dr. Kepler there. Uh, uh, Sonny, uh, Swati from Cincinnati, Ohio asks if you could share any insights or experiences from your space missions that influences your perspectives of living here back here on Earth. Oh, absolutely. You know, on, on my first mission, I was down on the mid-neck of the space shuttle and uh, was get rearranging everything. You know, we went from a rocket to a spaceship, and so you have to change a bunch of stuff and get the place ready for people to live in it for a couple days as you're getting ready um, to dock to the International Space Station. We had a day there that we were just orbiting as we were, just like we did on Starliner, uh, to catch up to the space station. And uh, my commander, Mark Polanski, said, said, Sonny, come here. And uh, I flew up the stairs, and I was like, oh, my God, I don't have to walk up the stairs. This is pretty amazing. This is so cool. And, that, you know, that just was awesome. And, you know, I hadn't looked at myself in the mirror yet. But I flew up the stairs, and then I saw the planet, you know, outside the shuttle windows, just like Butch and I saw the, the planet outside of our window on Starliner, or as you see out the windows right here on the Inter International Space Station. And you look down at it, and you're just like, "Whoa, they're right." They, what in kinder, you know, in elementary school, they said the Earth is round, and it absolutely is. <laughs> and it's, I'm saying that sort of as a, a little bit of a joke, but just that that ability to see that and react, that reality was like, "Wow, there were, you know, there are people on Earth, you know, centuries ago who figured all this out, and they didn't have to have the opportunity to come to space, but they they tapped into their mind and they figured out things, and it was like, "Wow, you know, this is." just amazing and it makes you think about like what the human brain can actually do if you use it in a proper way and and really study and think about stuff you can think of abstract thoughts that are not quite at your eyeball um, and the second 
a concept that came to me that same moment was like, it's just our planet. That's all we have. We have one planet that we know of as human beings where we all live and it's a little crazy that we all don't get along. I mean, this is it. This is our spaceship in the universe and um, we really ought to get along. And it made me really want to go see places all over the earth and just talk to people about how wonderful of a planet it is and how we should really think of it that way and, and conserve it. Yeah, that's amazing. And particularly when you think about the overview effect that uh, people such as yourselves have the opportunity to experience, we hope that uh, you're able to convey and share that type of experience around the world because absolutely from space, uh, there are no political boundaries and, uh, and it's just planet Earth. So thank you so much for that, that uh, element there. Uh, last question is for both of you from Michael from Fairfax, Virginia. And he asked the two of you, uh, how does your body feel when you return to Earth after a mission, and how long does it take until you're adjusted back to normal life, whatever normal life is, uh, both uh, mentally and physically? When you've been in space for a, a little bit, gravity is not your friend. Um, but you adjust, right? The human body is, is truly amazing in its design that uh, you've neurovestibular, your balance in your semicircular semi canals is where we get our balance. And it takes a little bit of time for them to get adjusted back to gravity. And once they do, you're fine. And it's different for different people. A couple of hours for some, a couple of days for others. Um, so it is a process, uh, but there's no better place to be than on earth. It's great to come here and visit. Yep. And great to come here and visit for extended periods of time. But uh, ho earth is where home is. Earth is where family is. Earth is where we build a lot of those memories and working together to get here and go other places. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, we were born on Earth. We were formed on Earth. And so our bodies, everything about them is about gravity. And so being able to come up here and live in, in, in space, um, it, it takes a little adaptation. And likewise, once you've been here, your human body, which is amazing, can adapt to living here and so going back to earth it's a little tough um, but like Butch said you know you can't escape gravity and so when you get home you just adjust to it when I was on my first mission which was um, almost 200 days it took almost that many days for me to feel like I wanted to run as fast as I could before I left it's you know it's a it's a phase thing like Butch said neurovestibular um, also just being tired because like all those little muscles, your balance muscles, you don't have to use when you're up here. When you get back, your body is stressed out a little bit and has to understand all that. We do have exercise equipment to help us prepare for coming home. We have a, a, a treadmill, which we strap ourselves down to. We have a bicycle, which we clip our feet into. And we actually have a resistive exercise device where we can, with a bar, through vacuum can lift weights and do what's really important to us for bone density, uh, squats and deadlifts to make sure that we are ready to be able to walk when we get back home, no problem. And it's been super, super successful. And it's been allowed many astronauts to come back home after being here on the International Space Station for six months, up to a year even, um, to be fine and be able to do that rehabilitation and be able to get back to life on Earth. So. Um, like Butch said, life on Earth is, uh, is really the best thing ever, and um, we'll be happy to go back home when it's our time to go back home. Well, Butch, but Sonny, you can't do this on Earth. <laughs> so this, is, this makes it special. <laughs> well, Butch, Sonny, we're looking forward to welcoming you back here on Earth. Uh, we're also looking forward to having you come visit us at the White House. Uh, have a safe journey home, and thank you for all that you're doing for our nation and our world, and we look forward to your safe return. Thank you again.